Good morning, America. Good morning, my children. Welcome to another fine edition of the Pick 6, our wonderful football show here on Bruce Sports. Uh, I'm exhausted and I'm tired, but I'm ready to roll. And I'm alongside my good friend and colleague, James Stewart. James, how are you today, my friend? I am wonderful. Well, wonderful. you know, well, well rested. A little bit more than you. <laughs> All right, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. We're going to go. We're going to have fun today. We're going to get the, the uh, blood rolling. Uh, well, our first Blood segment rolling? today, obviously, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making stuff up today. Okay. We'll roll with it. Uh, we have a bunch of good stuff to talk about. Obviously, Brady's jersey has been found. And thank God, because I was worried. I was freaking out. Uh, <laughs> Trump is in the media, and he is relevant in the NFL world, so we will talk about that. Some retired players talking about possibly making a comeback. And we will also feature the top team, our two early picks for the top team in each division, so we will talk about that as well. But first off, let's start with Crossed the Line, one of my favorite segments we do on this show. Uh, we'll start with the Brady culprit. <laughs> the Brady culprit. Uh, there is a man who has been found in Mexico who apparently, I know, who apparently... For Trump, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was in Mexico. I knew it all along. I could have told you that. <laughs> uh, the Brady Jersey culprit from the Super Bowl has been found in Mexico, and he has been linked to the jersey that was stolen in the Patriots Seahawks Super Bowl, and as well as a helmet and possibly cleats from He's Bob Miller from Super Bowl 50. The dude's making bank. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Well, he robbed what? the bank, and Do you he think got this caught. Is going to be the uh, the leading argument for the wall now. For the wall. I'm telling you, <laughs> if this wall was up, the jersey would have never got to Mexico. It's, well, it's interesting because the FBI obviously tracked him down. Right. Uh, the jersey itself was valued up to about $500,000, which at that point which is, is crazy. A, fen- a felony. Um, yeah, so the, the, the FBI got involved, and somehow they were able to figure it out. And there's a video. Um, I should have pulled that up, too. There's a video uh, that shows him going into the locker room. And then leaving with a black bag or something under his uh, stinky armpit, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, which you know. But I, I'm I'm wondering. <clears throat> we'll get into it a little more uh, in a second here. <laughs> it's I think it's pretty safe to say that the Brady culprit crossed the line. But do you have any thoughts on uh, Mr. Mr. Mystery Man over here? <laughs> I mean, one. How, I don't even know how this got to this point. The FBI <laughs> and everything is involved it's looking for a jersey. And, but, <laughs> yeah, of course he crossed the line. He stole something. <laughs> but it's also, I mean, it's good for a laugh, right? It is good for a laugh. It's good for a laugh. Uh, he at won't least be a laughing, couple. But... Yeah, he won't be laughing. He won't be laughing. Uh, again, yes, good morning to everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to uh, like and share and comment because without your comments, you know, we're just a couple talking heads. So. <laughs> Uh, All right, our second part of Cross the Line, Donald Trump is back in the media and it is relative to the NFL. Donald Trump says he was behind the uh, the finding of the the jersey in Mexico. He is responsible for (laughs) discovering and recovering the jersey in Mexico. Uh, (laughs) Like he physically went and and tracked the guy down. I'm telling you, I knew it all (laughs) along. I've been telling the FBI, I said, hey, this guy's in Mexico. I could have told you that. So (laughs) Donald Trump says he's responsible for recovering Tom Brady's jersey. They're like golf buddies or something. I I mean, this wouldn't be the first time that he's taken credit. So, I mean, that's par for the course. I was was on the 10th tee with Tom Brady, and I said, Tom, I'm going to get your jersey. Don't worry. (laughs) I got it. Did did Donald Trump cross the line? I think it's. <laughs> I mean, I, he's always he's, he's always he is the across line. the line. He's he's bo- he was born across the line. <laughs> I am the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Colin Kaepernick still not signed. Spike Lee has come out after a what I believe was a lunch or a dinner with Colin Kaepernick. Spike Lee has come out and said that it is fishy that Colin Kaepernick has not been signed yet. Uh, this is interesting to me because A. Spike Lee doesn't really have any relation to the football world. No. But uh, it's, it's almost, I don't want to call it a cop-out, but it's, it's cheap to just come in and say something like that when there are teams that have other needs and have right. other things to figure out. I don't. I mean, I know I don't want a, a mediocre, subpar quarterback sitting no. on my roster. 
and it, it's a headache. I mean, you his media attention is going to be a headache in the same way that Tim Tebow was. The guy's not good enough to warrant that attention. And you can say that he's being blackballed or whatever, but the thing about it is he's a running quarterback. So who wants a backup quarterback that can't run your offense? Yes, I agree. You, you don't make plans for your backup quarterback. No. So if you bring on Kaepernick, you're basically having to run two offenses in case your starting quarterback gets hurt. Yeah, and, and that, not gonna that, start that brings up a good point. That really does complicate things, especially if you have a guy who is under center who does not uh, you know, go outside of the pocket too much. Right. But when running is your bread and butter and you can't really throw the ball very well, uh, yeah, I don't want. So there's him, only I don't a want few teams where it would actually work. Right, right. I mean, maybe the Browns, where even, when even, RG three goes down, then another running quarterback steps in. Yes, even in Buffalo, it would make sense, but I still don't want him because it doesn't. It's not necessary. Uh, a, I don't want to pay him. I don't want to pay him the money. But B, it, it like you said, it is a headache because you do get the media attention. It's like when we when the Bills got Rex Ryan. Like, right. It was like okay, we're getting the media attention. He's gonna say some things sometimes. It'd be kind of annoying and put you in the spotlight. And uh, look what happened. He's back. Uh, he got fired, and he's, he's back in the market. So, um, <clears throat> Did Spike Lee cross the line? I understand why he's doing it. I get it, but I just, you know, quite, I just don't care. I do not care about Colin. Like, I have no interest in Colin Kaepernick. I don't think he's a good quarterback, right. and I think that's why I have little to no interest right. in Colin Kaepernick. And like you said, he's, he's not – He's not been a good quarterback for quite some time now. And he had one good year. He had one good year. Right. And it was a system. He was a product of a system. Right. And, you know, of course, that good year happened to be against the Packers. Of, of course. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Spike Lee is, is doing what Spike Lee does. I mean, bring attention, make noise. That's about it. Spike Lee, man. They do have great <laughs> commercials, though. Spike, Spike and Charles, man. Uh, okay, let's see. So I'm going to say uh, the Brady culprit crossed the line because he stole about a million dollars worth of memorabilia. Uh, Donald Trump crossed the line because he's Donald Trump, <laughs> and Spike Lee is is right on the line, and that's going to be that's a debatable one. So yeah, um, <clears throat> he's not right, but he's not wrong. He's right, exactly. Like I get it, but I just you know I just don't care. It's Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> if we're talking about Tom <laughs> that, Brady, it's a different answer. story. Yeah. If you care. got a if you got a guy like Brady, I mean, it's not an elite quarterback. Even if it was like Philip Rivers or like right. Tony Romo. Like, okay, I'd think about it because you're still you're getting somebody who may improve your roster. Getting Colin Kaepernick is that may make your roster worse. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, so, and you got to think about the people in the locker room too. The people in the locker room really want this headache too, like around them, no. surrounding them. Some and again, some for a are, backup quarterback, right? For a backup quarterback, it just doesn't it doesn't seem worth it. So, uh, like you said, it does go right along the lines of uh, the Tim Tebow talk. But uh, okay, so talking about Brady's jersey, Brady's jersey was found. Uh, real quick, I believe we have a video of the uh, police chief in Houston talking about. Uh, when uh, how they discovered the jersey or how they discovered the culprit and how they ended up tackling tackling him pun intended so I believe we have a video here our it is. investigators actually developed information from a, an informant here in uh, Austin in Houston excuse me uh, that led them to Mexico uh, and the, uh, that led them to believe that the jersey was actually in Mexico and quite frankly as a result of that investigation we were able to work with the FBI and Mexican authorities to uh, respond to the suspect's last known location or known location and look for the jersey. The jerseys were subsequently recovered. Uh, the jersey was subsequently recovered along with the jersey f from uh, Mr. Brady from Super Bowl, I believe, 49. That, that had been previously uh, gone missing uh, from that Super Bowl were recovered uh, in Mexico and taken by the FBI and NFL security again to Boston where efforts are being made right now to uh, authenticate the jerseys. Okay, so <sighs> this seems like a lot for a jersey. I mean, <laughs> Here, here's the deal. I don't know who valued the jersey at five hundred thousand dollars. I don't. It seems like a pretty premature, I mean, that's... premature uh, estimate. I get it because you know, fifty years from now, right? The greatest quarterback of all time, potentially. Maybe, maybe his last Super Bowl jersey. Like, I get it. Five hundred thousand dollars, whatever. Would you pay five? No, I would. No, I wouldn't pay a hundred for a regular Brady jersey. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. It's it's interesting. I love I love how it all kind of unfolded because Brady didn't even care. Right. He he came out and said, you know what, like if it's out there, like I'd love to have it back, but I'd rather have the like I would but take I'll the ring. Win another one, yeah, so I would whatever. take the ring over the jersey any day of the week. Uh, so he really didn't care, but the rest of the world was like, gosh darn it. How dare you we steal didn't figure from this Tom out. Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and thankfully, they did figure it out because they were able to recover uh, several other items of mem- football memorabilia, including... How does this guy keep getting in? Well, that's what I was going to ask, because I was going to get to you. So they found another jersey from uh, the Super Bowl against the uh, the Seahawks, and then they also found a, f- a football helmet, most likely uh, belonging to Von Miller from Super Bowl 50, and he, he Von Miller's wondering if his cleats are there as well, <laughs> which there is a good chance. So... Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm wondering, I mean, this guy's got to have some kind of special access, right? Well, I want to see if they still have the security footage from the last time yeah. he stole something. If they know that he stole the Jersey from, you know, the last Super Bowl they were in, I want to see, because if it's the same dude, that's amazing. Right. Like give this guy a freaking medal. <laughs> Cause how do you, I mean, what? Okay. So he is uh, credentialed as an international media source. Okay. What the hell does that mean? You got and like, so is he like writing for a newspaper in Cancun? He's like, just a source of media. Got my press pass. <laughs> Part of the AP. Well, that's the thing is, I'm trying to figure out which media source is about to get slammed for credentialing right. this yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Also, is this bigger than? we see right now is it more than just one guy is it a group of people people? are they working together is it just one really big tom brady fan that's like oh thank god i got credentialed why do i keep going back to donald (laughs) trump voice i have no idea it's too easy it's a crutch right now it's a crutch it's just funny it's just funny i'll have to find a new a new voice to do but yeah so i think this may be bigger than we believe I mean, it should it should be an easy problem to fix, though. We're gonna you caught him, so it's it's gonna it be like end, though, right? it's gonna be like National Treasure, where <laughs> this is just the beginning, and it's Somewhere gonna lead us to the Templar, the Templar's gold, <laughs> the Templar's treasure. Yeah. It's gonna we're just gonna find like OJ's missing memorabilia, <laughs> like all this stuff is just gonna be like in in this big warehouse in Cancun. <laughs> I don't know. On the other side of the wall. On the other side of the wall. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Mexico is like, hey, go ahead, build that wall. We have Brady's jersey. You're never getting it back. Yeah. Uh, we'll trade you a jersey for the wall. Uh, <laughs> anyways, okay, moving on. Um, I see Baxter has pulled up my video from yesterday. I forgot we were going to open the show with this, but that's okay. So I, uh, Baxter and I, after our show yesterday, after halftime, we – for some reason, I don't know why, it was the most random thing in the entire world. He looks at me and he goes, do you want to simulate a Madden game? I'm like, well, yeah, I guess, yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you? And he goes, all right. And he pulls it up and he puts it on the monitor here and it says Madden 08. And I was like, what the <laughs> hell am I getting myself into? Uh, as we all know, the Packers were much better than the Bills in, yeah, the, in 2008. Yeah, you start going back and thinking so, 08. Yeah, 08. I'm like, who's our quarterback? <laughs> J.P. Lossman. Okay, we suck. Uh, yeah, so uh, long story short, we <laughs> – the Bills, like, we simulated it. So we weren't actually playing, right. but the Bills were able to take the lead somehow magically in the fourth quarter and then in perfect Bills fashion, blow it with seconds on <laughs> the, the clock. Like, said, somehow, no. Dick Sharon just blows the game. So uh, I think if, if Baxter has it pulled up, I, I have my snap story from yesterday. Never going to believe this, but the Bills are up by one with 48 seconds left, and they have the ball to kneel it out. Amazing. The the kick is up. It's good. But wait a minute. There's three seconds on the clock. Three seconds left. Three seconds. What is going on? Down by one. No! Oh, it's a Bills game from 2008. What is this? <laughs> oh, my nightmares are real. <laughs> this is my nightmare. <laughs> this is my- to JP Lost, With three seconds left on the clock, <laughs> on the 30-yard line, Brett Favre, in perfect Favre fashion, scores a touchdown. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I knew it, too. I mean, too. it was typical Favre and typical Bills. Well, what's even more messed up is, so the Packers had the ball, and this was earlier in the game. They were up 7 nothing, or I think it was 10 nothing. Yeah. And, and uh, what happened was they are in field goal range, and the fans in Lambeau are <laughs> booing the Packers for deciding to kick a field goal as opposed to going for it on, like, fourth and one or something. And so they kick the field goal, and it is the worst kick in the entire <laughs> – and it goes way left. It's just an awful kick. And I'm like, oh, there's hope. So they turn over the ball, and the Bills get it. And on the first play, fumble. The Packers get another chance to kick a field goal. I don't know if you guys can see this. There is true <laughs> anguish on his face. I mean, un- he is. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. It's like you, you had to relive your childhood. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, what am I watching? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so – Madden 2008, totally, like, <laughs> I had to watch Marshawn Lynch's rookie season. Like, I'm going through all that all that headache, that whole headache. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yes, we simmed again. I sat there and watched the entire thing. <laughs> it wasn't like I was sitting there like, I'm it wasn't going, like it's, a fourth and, ordeal. it's not 4th yeah. and 30, and I'm like, Hail Mary, J.P. Lossman, let's do this. You know what I mean? Like, no. And you were into it. Oh, the Bills! The Bills! Uh, after that kickoff, they they kicked the ball out of bounds, so got a penalty. Gave him great field position. <laughs> Unbelievable! So that's my life today. <laughs> that's my life today. Have you? Uh, do you remember any? I mean, do you have like a favorite Madden? Like mine, for some reason, is always two thousand three. I don't know why. I like the soundtrack. I think <laughs> PS two. No, I like back in the day when they used to have like the. They would have like you know exhibit or something. Do mm-hmm. like an intro, but they used to have like the long <laughs> intro. All the like bone crushing hits. And oh stuff. yeah. Like, I mean, they don't oh, do yeah. that anymore. No. I feel like now it's just Odell Beckham. No. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how about uh, how about? I think I have a start sit cut for us later that maybe we'll get into too if okay. we have time. But uh, did you ever play any like Tecmo Super Bowl on of the course. NES or uh, you know because the Bills were actually good in that game. Right. So that's. <laughs> Anytime I go home, I always I sit down and I play Tecmo Super Bowl with my brother. I don't think if like you didn't, hours you didn't play Tecmo Super Bowl, you shouldn't play Madden. Bo Jackson. You, you got to start at the beginning. Yeah, you do. Learn you do. You got to learn the basics you know? <laughs> on Tecmo Super Bowl. You got to run. Learn how to run. You got to learn yeah. to run in a cross pattern <laughs> before you can learn how to do anything. Or you have to pl- learn how to break yeah. <laughs> 11 tackles before you can you know, really oh, get out there. Oh, my God. Exactly. Uh, more of a backyard football kind of guy. Okay. All right. Whatever, Baxter. <laughs> I do love backyard football. That was always fun to play on the computer. All the backyard sports games were fun. Uh, what about um, NFL Blitz 2000 and 64? Did you ever play any oh, of the yeah. Blitz games? Oh, yeah. The best Guys you could fire. hit after the, after the whistle. You oh, yeah. It was great. Around. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no late hits. Like, totally legal. And, and the double pass was, like, yeah. the best play in the game. Uh, <laughs> it really was for some reason. <laughs> the only play in the game because you would just basically pass it backwards to pass it forward. I would always... I my brothers knew all the cheat codes, so like when the when the game's loading, you can type yeah. in cheat codes or whatever. <laughs> so my brothers are like their players are invisible, or they have like a huge head and they're on fire, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is going on? All I can get is like you know like my quarterback has like a dress. <laughs> like, what is this garbage? What is this garbage? Um, okay, let's see. There's some other stuff going on. How I mean, how do you feel about this so far? We're doing okay. I'm having fun. We're doing okay. I sound like Jim I mean, Rome. It's still early. What's up, clones? <laughs> Jim Rome here. All right. Uh, <laughs> there's some retired players who are talking about making a comeback. Uh, we've seen it all before. Brett Favre about 150 times. <laughs> um, Ray Rice says he can still play, and Marshawn Lynch is considering returning, but only with the Oakland Raiders. So let's start with Ray Rice. Ray Rice has came out and said that he thinks he can still play. He says the reason why he's not in the league isn't because he can't play football. I mean, I'd, have to, I'd tend to agree. I mean, but it's just another situation where it's the same as Kaepernick. No one wants to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The video pretty much ruined his career. Well, let's talk about Michael, Mike Vick then, because Vick was in prison, and he came right. out, and teams took a chance on him, you know? But it wasn't like the Eagles took a chance on him as a backup. Yeah. As a favorite to Donovan McNabb. Yeah, that's true. So, As I mean, a favorite he, to Donovan He kind of got in the perfect situation. He pulled some strings, him. yeah. You know. Okay. I mean, Ray Rice is 
he was already kind of on the decline. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, again, he's, what, 30? Yeah. Do you really yeah, want to bring in a 30-year-old running back? No, I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't. That's what AP is for. Uh, he's not AP. He's not AP. No. He's, that's, that's certainly certainly true. Uh, Marshawn Lynch on the opposite side of the spectrum, probably the most realistic retired person or player right now to yeah. make a comeback. And, I mean, staying at home. Stay, yeah, to. yeah. He's in Oakland. He's from Oakland. It makes sense to go to Oakland, so why wouldn't we give him give him a chance? Uh, you have to think he's still got a little bit left in the tank, too. I mean, he was he, – Yeah, he retired early. Right, He and it's not like he was a speed – speed burner or anything no, like that he was no he was gonna run you over so I, he can run up the middle he can i think he can still break tackles you might not see any more beast mode seen it i mean there's but. some footage of ray rice uh, going left and right well i mean hey diddle ray, diddle ray, ray rice yeah. up the middle yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know ray rice is interesting because you're right he is another one of those head like headaches that teams do not want to take a chance on is he a polarizing player yeah Maybe not anymore. It's been he were a couple of years removed now. And again, uh, though the league is trending away from all these running backs. So I mean, can you get a guy to come in and do what Ray Rice does? Probably. What if what if Ray Rice was an elite quarterback as opposed to a running back? I think. Yeah, I would. Teams would be more willing to. They, they'd be willing to entertain it. It's it's tough because again, as a quarterback, it's like you're supposed to be the leader and yeah. And, you beat your wife. But then again, Vic got girlfriend. another try. That's true. This is true. Uh, it's interesting. And, but Vic, he faced a lot of backlash his entire comeback. He did. I mean, he did. No one, a lot of people really didn't forgive him and really won't ever. They secretly him. were right. like, gosh, if I hate this guy. This play, I'd be okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, if he scores a touchdown, fine. But, like, if he gets hurt, also fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So Marshawn Lynch possibly going to Oakland. Now, I don't know how this will, how this all has to play out in regards to Seattle. I mean, Seattle doesn't want him. Obviously, they just signed Eddie Lacy, which is basically Lacey. a chunkier, less, hopefully less mild. lower quality <laughs> Marshawn Lynch. Um, Oakland. If Marshawn Lynch goes to Oakland, see, I I agree. Well, though. Latavius Murray's gone. Yes, I do think that Marshawn still has a lot in the tank, or at least a little bit. And some people are saying that there's no way he's in football shape. I don't think he necessarily even has to be in football no. shape because the, his style of play doesn't I mean, need he, him he to needs, be. What, 10, 10 carries, 15 carries. Yeah, something. and he'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's not, he's not out there to do any receiving or anything like that. Would that make Oakland a Super Bowl contender? No. No. I mean, it was they help. had they already had you know Latavius Murray, so right. It's not like last year they didn't have a decent running back, right? So I don't think it. I don't they're think a team it to watch them over though. the top. It, they're definitely a team to watch. They're an up, com, up and coming team. Yeah, but it doesn't doesn't put them over the top. And I, I don't think very few running backs in the league, no matter where they go, are going to put any team over the top. I agree. Just the teams are throwing too much. I mean, the Bills had the best running game in the right. entire NFL last year, and they still missed the still missed the playoffs. So, certainly not a running a running league. We all know that. Uh, let's see what else is going on out there. Uh, in the opposite side of the spectrum, talking about players coming back from retirement, there are still some players out there that maybe should consider retiring. One of whom is Darrell Revis. Is he still the shutdown Revis on Revis Island that we used to know him as? No. He, no. He, I, I don't think he can match up against the speedsters anymore. I mean, in, in the short, he could probably play a zone, a yeah. physical zone pretty well. But I don't think he can he can hang with your your top flight receivers. Which Especially is, these young guys. Right. I mean, John some, Ross running a four two two. <laughs> but especially at cornerback, it, it's kind of one of those – Usually around this time they would have moved to safety. Yeah. And he's he's going to be a corner. I mean that's that's who he is. But I think it might be if if he finds the right situation where he doesn't have to be the number 1. Yeah. It's worth considering. Is he he's obviously not a shutdown corner anymore. Is he still a top quality cornerback? I mean he's better than any of the cornerbacks the Packers have. So I mean, I, so would you take him with the Packers? As, yeah, as a Packer fan, I would. Yeah. Okay. So 
No, the answer is no. Darrell Rivers should not retire. He should go play for the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if he finds I the right it, situation, yeah. <laughs> which um, would be helping us. I like the idea of Darrell Rivas just because for the same reason why I like the idea of Adrian Peterson. You're getting a name, and he's quality, and there's a chance that he may still be phenomenal. So I would take him. Uh, the Bills should look at him because we need some we need some help on the uh, – in the backfield, but yeah, but as a corner, if you lose a step, it's probably a lot more impactful as yes. a running back loses a step. I agree. The thing with a corner you have to worry about is it can get ugly if if he's not Darrell Revis. <laughs> if he's not Darrell Revis, <laughs> yes. if he's not Revis Island, it'll be ugly. It'll be ugly. Touchdowns. He'll be called Touchdown Revis, <laughs> not for a good reason. Uh, there are some other people out there right now who are still unsigned. Uh, let's take a look at some of the best players still available uh, as we move through free agency in this NFL offseason. Dante Hightower has re-signed with the Patriots. That is uh, an update. Which is I huge talked about him last week. It is huge for him. I think he really wanted to stay with the Patriots anyways. It was all just kind of a... It was, just, it was just a vacation. He's like, I'm going to go look I'm around. Yeah. I'm going to go shop, <laughs> but I'm still going to wear the same suit I've been wearing. <laughs> I'm going to go to a men's warehouse and try everything on, but I'm not going to buy anything. So Let's go get a few cupcakes. So go get a few. Go to go go hang out with the Jets. <laughs> get a free cupcake. Have a good birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else is still out there? Oh, guess what? Jay Cutler, Colin Kaepernick, <laughs> Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, all the all the people that – the world wants to know, to know where they're going. Yes. Literally, I mean, I'm looking at these four names, and this is literally all I care about in free agency right now is where are these guys going? Is Jay Cutler going to start somewhere? Mm, probably not. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, no. But I'm still interested in, to see where they're going to end up. Uh, same Cutler's with Adrian Peterson. Kind of in, even. Uh, he's, he's in an interesting situation. I mean, he, he was a bear, so I really don't have anything nice to say about him. <laughs> but that being said, he's probably better – than a lot of your bad quarterbacks. The problem is he's not good enough to make an investment in. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, do you really want to bring him in, even if he is better than, than what you have? Is it Jay that Cutler. much of an upgrade? No. I mean, he's got the arm, he's got this and that, but then he's got the pouty face. So. Yeah. I think that uh, I, I I don't want him on my team. Right. For the, not for the same reason why I don't want Colin Kaepernick, but I will say neither quarterback is really going to upgrade any team out there. There may be a couple teams, like the Browns should probably look at him, but the Browns. I mean, if Jay Cutler went to the Browns, it would be a Browns move. <laughs> well, they have RG3. So they do, have, yeah. Like, they've the bas- they basically out. already covered that. Uh, Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles. Oh, my God, just sign somewhere already. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of it. I want to know where they're going to go, and I still have no idea. I mean, at this point, though, it, you know, we keep talking about them like they're Adrian Peterson and Jamal Charles of old, but they're not. They're Obviously, not. because they're not, they're, they haven't been signed yet. Right. So who, wherever they go at this point, it's going to be in, it's, it's going to be in a split position. It's, at this point, I mean, you would think that if anyone wanted those two guys – to lead their backfield. It would have yeah. happened already. I think, uh, I mean, for the same reason, like I would take Adrian Peterson, but you're not getting anything special. Right. You shouldn't expect Adrian Peterson of if know, you're taking five years ago. Adrian Peterson or so, Jamal Charles, for that fact, you're hoping that they can have that one or two final good years. Right. Uh, Pat says the Packers defense will miss Cutler greatly. <laughs> He's not that wrong. That is true. He's not wrong. When you when you said that you didn't have anything nice to say about him, I was gonna I was gonna mention what about all the all the passes he throws to your defense. <laughs> In the um, words of uh, Charles Woodson, same old Jay. Same old Jay. <laughs> same old Jay. Throwing me the ball. Uh, Tony says I demolished James in blitz. That is completely untrue. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think uh, maybe we need to bring N sixty four on here one day. I mean, look if you want to if. I'll play him. I'll play. I mean, yeah, get him in here. Maybe we should just do that. Screw the NCAA <laughs> tournament. Let's have an NFL Blitz two th- to just, 2000 uh, tournament. Play and then we'll get into live? Tecmo. I have Tecmo. Maybe I'll bring it in. 
I, I don't see why you wouldn't. I have to. I have to now. My brother would kill me if I didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, what else is going on out there? We covered the free agent, uh, the remaining free agents that I think are relevant. Uh, we talked about Brady's jersey being found in Mexico. In Mexico. I told you it was there. Uh, we talked about some retired players who may make a comeback and whether or not it is actually worth it. And we also talked about whether or not Darrell Rivas should retire. And both of us decided against it. No. I originally thought that he should, but. So did I. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, I thought, I'd yeah. take him. Yeah, right. And exactly. So you did the same thing. I was like, well, yeah, I'd take I Rivas. I talked myself out of it just like, by thinking wait, about. Wait, what am I talking about? Like, my backfield sucks. <laughs> like, of course I'd take Darrell Rivas. Of course I would. If Darrell, if you're watching, we'll have you. <laughs> if you'll have us. You can literally pick either team. I won't be mad if you go with the Packers, and I don't think James will be mad if you come to the Bills. I will like, be a little, a little upset. We got a hole. We got some holes to fill. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Uh, what else is going on? Well, Chin- you know, speaking of free agency, how about what? How about what the Patriots are doing though? It seems like they, yeah. are, you know, they re-signed Dante Hightower. Dante Hightower. Yeah. They get Brandon Cooks in a trade. I mean, they and they may be. Looking to get in the top fifteen in the uh, in the first round of the draft here. When's the last There's time a good you saw chance a that's going to happen? Doing all of that, never. To basically, reload on the fly. They're going to probably go add another Super Bowl. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> Which, ridiculous. I mean, he'll get it's another, he'll have another jersey to get stolen, yeah. and you know, it's amazing to me because I hate the Patriots, but they are priming themselves for another deep run at a right. Super Bowl, and. It sucks because I don't want to see it happen, uh, but they're loading up in free agency. They're signing, they're re-signing players. They just the signs, they brought in Stephon Gilmore, who is considerably one of the better cornerbacks in the league. So their defense is going to be better this year, and their offense is going to be better, which is scary. I mean, Cooks is another guy, kind of like the Wes Welker, uh, Amendola, just kind of that. That ilk, but he's also got the top fl- top flight speed, so he's not going to be like Randy Moss, where you can just throw it up to him. <laughs> right, right. But they've finally got a guy who, in can the same way that Randy Moss did, there. just get open, you go as fast as you can, and I'll throw it as mm-hmm. far as I can. Pretty crazy. I mean, that's scary, is what it is. Tom Brady is basically looking at a guy who, in most cases, should be winding down his career. Is yeah, just keeps getting more and more weapons. I hate it. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm mean, so Belichick over is, this. Belichick is definitely. I am so over an this. architect. Guess who's going to the Giants? Who's that? Geno Smith. <laughs> He's gonna be, uh, this just in: uh, Geno Smith will be battling Eli Manning for the uh, starting role. I mean, as if you're the Gino, when Giants you just quarterback get out of New York. Like I'm done. With well, New this York. is we talked about this before when Brandon Marshall signed with the Giants, like literally a week ago. <laughs> wow, what is that like when like so did, was was Marshall just like yeah man just come on over like the the training hours are great like <laughs> the Jets get the morning shift like we get the afternoon like that's what we really want uh we, there's a cuter you know the, the staff is cuter like for the for the trainers like just come on over here <laughs> everything's better over here it's everything's greener well actually it's more blue right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Geno Smith going to the going to the Giants doesn't have to move. No, he just just has to change his schedule into a different a door. Bit. Yeah, I mean, it changes. His... <laughs> Dude, I mean, I, I want to be I want to be a, I want to be a fly on that wall. Right. And just listen to like you know, like passing people left and right. How's it going? It's good. It's good. I mean, that pretty much means he's given up on being a starting quarterback, though, right? Yeah. He's just looking for a job. Oh my god. <laughs> Geno Smith. Geno Smith and Eli- I remember when, when Geno Smith and EJ Manuel came out of the draft, I was like, sick. Like two first round picks right. in the AFC East. They're going to be rivals for their entire career. No, nah, not so much. Wow, I was wrong. <laughs> I was way off. Yeah, now there's a ba- one's a backup quarterback in Oakland, and the other's a backup quarterback in New York. The Again. other New York. Again, yeah. Well, in technically New Jersey, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, what else do we got? Top teams in each division. You want to talk about that? Sure. Well, let's do our two early picks for the top team in each division in the upcoming season. Obviously, it is very early, but I thought it would be fun to at least take a look at it 
and see what we have out there. Let's start with your conference. Let's start with the NFC. Um, do you want to start in the East? Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, Since we're already I mean, talking it's about be, the Giants. It's got to be Dallas, obviously. I mean, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what Dak does in his sophomore season and, and Elliott, but mainly, you know, quarterback in his, his sophomore season. Everyone's kind of – everyone knows you. We've seen you, and you're not surprising anyone. Any kind of flew under the radar – because of the fact that Ezekiel Elliott was so hyped. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do still have that line. They do still have a running game. And he still has uh, Des Bryant. So it's got to be Dallas. I think they're, I, I agree with you. I will say I think Dallas is going to take the, the NFC East. But I will say it's going to be interesting to see how the New York Giants play next year because with Brandon Marshall complimenting Odell Beckham Jr., uh, and now they have the stifling Geno Smith on the back end. Um, I think the Giants could compete with the Cowboys. I think Dak Prescott's going to have another good year next year, but I don't think he's going to have as good of yeah, a year. Sure. He's going to hit his sophomore slump, I think. I mean, you would think that Brandon Marshall is is going to be a lot of help for Odell Beckham. I mean, it's going to take a lot of heat yes. off him, yeah. As long as Odell can keep his head clean. And exactly. let's focus on the game. As long as he's not fighting with Josh Norman. Yeah, as you're complaining about a well-defended play. <laughs> God dang it. Uh, okay, let's move over to the NFC North. Um, I think I know who you're going to choose. I'm going to shock everyone and go with the Packers. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's some really riveting stuff here. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. but honestly, it's a bad division. Look at it. It is a bad Don't, division. I mean, how crazy <sighs> is it to say it. that the Lions are probably – The Lions, the Vikings, and the Bears – at some point, we need to address the fact that Teddy Bridgewater may never play the game again. Yes. But that when that news does come out, we can talk about that. But, yes, I agree with you. The Packers will be taking the NFC North. Uh, for those of you watching, of course, share, like, comment, be a part of the discussion. Uh, I'm, our, our picks so far have been pretty straightforward. Yeah, you can't no really deny that. Here. Yeah, no surprises there. Uh, okay, so let's move on over to the NFC South then where things can get really interesting in a hot second. Uh, probably one of the better divisions in the league, I think. Yeah, this one is this one's kind of – I'm not going with the Falcons. I'm not either. I, I'm going with Tampa Bay. I think okay. that Jameis is, is ready to take that next step. Um, it's, I think the Falcons are going to take a step back, come back to earth. Uh, Matt Ryan is still – going to be Matt Ryan but yep there might be a little Super Bowl hangover there <laughs> um New Orleans Drew Brees is, is getting Nons. up there they, they lose Cooks that's tough it's gonna hurt them right and then you, you know, know the Panthers are I, I don't know really know what to make of the Panthers they kind of fell, fell you know, fast. this is one of the this is one of the only divisions where every team has potentially an elite or second tier elite quarterback. Yes. And that makes the division itself very interesting and very competitive. I mean, to, to look at the Panthers record from last year, it'd be six and 10. Which, Who when I looked at coming? it, was kind of surprising. Who saw that coming? Right, exactly. So I can see the Panthers being much better next year. Uh, the Saints are interesting because I always want to love Drew Brees. I really do. Yeah. But when you lose Cooks and, you know, a couple years ago and you lose Jimmy Graham, it's like you're, lo- you're getting rid of your you're, best you're players. You're losing what you did well. Yeah. So that, does, that didn't really make sense to me. So I mean, they were I a agree. team that tried to outscore everyone. So you can't keep losing weapons. I want to root for Drew Brees, but I honestly believe that the Saints will be last in that division next year. Uh, but I think the Panthers will surprise some people. I agree. The Atlanta Falcons will take a step back. Uh, but I think the top of the division is going to be fought between Tampa Bay and Carolina, ultimately with Tampa Bay coming out on top. Uh, the NFC West, uh, some other familiar faces over there for you Packer fans and Patriot fans. The Seattle Seahawks, Arizona Cardinals, the Los Angeles Rams, and the San Francisco 49ers. More like the San Francisco, I don't care because <laughs> you're bad. Yeah, I got I mean, jokes. Let's just eliminate them. Let's eliminate. The, let's eliminate the Rams and the, the Rams Niners. Well. So we're talking the Cardinals and the Seahawks. And the Seahawks in have the to NFC beat West. one team, or or Literally. the Arizona has to beat one team. Yeah, because you're going to beat the other two. I'm gonna go. 
I'm going to go with the Seahawks. You have I, to. I thought about Arizona. I really like uh, the running back there. but David Johnson. Yeah, David Johnson. I mean, he's a, he's a beast. He is that a beast. Guy, I mean, if you, I if you him need someone year. in fantasy, that's <laughs> who you need to get. That should have drafted him. He's everywhere. But Seattle, the defense. Mm-hmm. We'll see what the addition of Eddie Lacy does. But I'm going Seattle. I, you're right, though. You have to think about Arizona. I want same for the same reason why I, I want, want to root Arizona. for. Yeah, I know, I do too. For the same reason why I want to see Drew Brees succeed, I want to see Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald succeed right. because Larry Fitzgerald is one of the I best mean, get, wide receivers classic, who will <laughs> will never make it close to winning a Super Bowl. Um, well, he was they've been one. close. They've been close. Yes. Who did they lose to? Um, uh, who did they lose to that year? I'll have to look. We'll was get that in, the we'll, Pittsburgh. Uh, maybe yeah. we'll get an intern on it, <laughs> <laughs> which is essentially everybody watching. So they need to figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to go with the Seahawks as well. Seattle. So our winners for next season from the NFC uh, is Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and Seattle. We all agree on those, right? Yep. So okay. who comes out of there then? Ooh, now we're getting complicated. <laughs> hmm. Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and Seattle. Dallas. I'd put my money on Dallas. But the Giants are going to fight for that. So if the Giants ended up on top. So you're saying whoever's in the East. But I don't, I don't think the – well, that's the thing. I don't think the Giants would beat the Packers. I don't think – I think it would be fun to watch Seattle play the Packers again, but – I mean, as it stands right now, the Packers still need to do something on defense. So yeah, they do. As of today, I'm I wouldn't be going with the Packers. I'd probably go Seattle. Seattle, okay. And I hate it, but I know. All right, let's move over to the AFC. Uh, oh boy. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I went with a homer pick. So are you going to go with a homer pick? No, I can't because I don't have an elite quarterback. <laughs> it's not the same. All right, we'll start with the AFC East, the New England Patriots. New England, obviously. Like we said earlier, Hurts they're reloading. They're probably the, they're the favorite to win again. Right. And Tom Brady is going to continue better. to make us hate him. Yeah, the only reason, the only way they would not be better, is if Tom Brady actually took a step back, which is it's pretty much impossible. Right. And I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo didn't do too bad when he was. No, exactly, but. exactly. Uh, okay, so they're going to Patriots. We'll move straight on to the AFC North. <laughs> Nothing about the Bills yet? No. Not even putting up a fight? No. It's a bad division. <laughs> it's just one really good team. <laughs> uh, the AFC North, uh, the Steelers, the Ravens, the Bengals, and the Browns. Uh, it's safe to say we can eliminate the Browns. And then yeah. when you're talking about the Steelers, the Ravens, and the Bengals, it gets a little bit more interesting. I mean, you can't really put any stock in the Bengals. The Bengals are that team that when you look at them on paper, you're like, okay, this is their year. They're like the They're St. Louis it. Blues yeah. of the NHL. Where they, they'll make it to the playoffs, and it's like, meh. Right. <laughs> not going to wow anybody. You're like, A.J. Green is unguardable. He's amazing. So what, what's going on here? He's amazing. I mean, their their running back situation is, I don't know if you would call it quite a two-hitter monster, but you got Hill and uh, Bernard, pretty decent running backs. But yeah. they're – they're one of those situations where you just they're the Bengals until they're not. I agree. I'm so in the same you, boat. You got to leave them out. Now you're talking the Ravens and the Steelers. To me, it's the Steelers <laughs> it's, without it. Was, this is kind of a boring division. It, yeah, it is. Because it it's like you the, got old, the, aging quarterbacks yeah. who are who may have at one point been elite, but are not considered necessarily that right. anymore and every year we're gonna play up the Steelers Ravens like it's yep. this epic battle of it's two not. teams that hate each other but it, I don't care it's the Steelers I don't care the season, yeah. <laughs> Ray Lewis is not there yes. anymore. Ben Roethlisberger needs to retire maybe we should talk about him retiring um but at the same time well, I'd still take him on my team like, exactly. this is ridiculous uh okay so who are you gonna pick it's Steelers okay I want to pick the Ravens, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Steelers it is okay. No, moving on to the yeah, moving on to the AFC South. This is another confusing one. The Houston Texans, the Tennessee Titans, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. What is wrong with the AFC? <laughs> My God, I need to figure out what's going on in the NFL. Uh, okay. This well, is I tough. guess first we got to see whatever Houston's going to do at the quarterback. 
That's question. probably first and foremost. I mean, look at the records here: nine and seven, nine and seven, eight and eight. That is, the the Colts were one win away from winning the division. The Colts are. I would say the Colts are probably the ones with the upside. Because they're the only team that actually have an elite quarterback. Right. Yeah. I mean, the they Jaguars are making a ton of moves, like they've been for the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. But again, same situation with the Bengals. Right. They're the Jaguars until they're not. Fake it. Once yeah. They, Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Once they prove that they can actually have a successful season, then I'll choose them in my too early to exactly. choose picks <laughs> on Bruce. Until then, you can't even think about. Yeah. That. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Colts because. I want Andrew Luck to succeed, and I think that uh, if they put an offensive line in front of him, they'll, he'll be, they'll be very good. I'm going to actually go with uh, Tennessee. Okay. Just basically because, again, I don't really believe you want, in anyone in this. We need to do something yes. that's debatable. We've been we can't too much. be the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. We got one more, right? Yep. All right, real quick. Uh, going over to Facebook, Pat says, for the AFC West, I really like what the Raiders have been doing. Felt terrible when Carr got hurt last year, right before the playoffs. They've got a great group there and are right on the cusp. And I think it's fair to say, as we're moving into that division, this is a little bit more of an exciting division. Yes. Um, the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Broncos, and the Chargers. Again, you know, Broncos, quarterback situation, who knows? Figuring that out. Um, San Diego, Phillip Rivers, greatest quarterback to never even come close. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in the years, they've had some offensive weapons. It just, it's been their defense that yeah. kind of has Phillip Rivers has had, ha, has had some amazing seasons. He's played very yeah. well. That's another and they've fantasy still hero. lost. Yeah. I and mean, that guy is yeah. chucking the ball. Um, Kansas City is too boring. Yeah, too I'm going to agree with uh Patrick and I got to go with Oakland, Raiders. especially especially if they if Marshawn goes down there. But I'm going to go with them regardless. So is there anything else we can agree on? No. That's probably it. <laughs> uh, Back says the Browns will finish higher than the Bengals and Ravens in 2017. Heard it here first. <laughs> oh, my God. Unbelievable. The AFC will always be Pats to lose till Brady retires. Yes. <laughs> no the comment. Best part, the best part about that is seeing you answer it. I can I, yes. see the sadness going over your face as you're reading it. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Why did I choose to do the show? It's like you want to argue, but uh, then you do. You, right. I can't lie. I, I can't. Right. Like I can. I'm only. I can only be so biased. Uh, <laughs> my aunt Kim says, "Love this. Never have a bad day. She's the best." Do you have an aunt Kim? Is she the best? I, I had to think about this because now imagine <laughs> if I say no. I do not have an aunt Kim, no. <laughs> uh, Oh, man. This is great. This is fun. Uh, Beck says he has a cousin, Kim. I know a Kim. Do you? Yeah. Is she great? The best. Yeah. <laughs> must be must be it must be a Kim thing. <laughs> uh let's see. It's we're probably about time to move into our last segment, the pick six, which uh rightfully so is a play on words and I'm all about puns. So a pick the pick six where we pick six of something. And today I think we figured out it is six underwhelming quarterbacks. And since we just went through and chose our teams our picks for the year. Uh, let's talk about a couple quarterbacks that we think will be underwhelming next season. Um, let's go in alternating order. Uh, okay. I'll flip a coin again. Okay, James, you go first. Are you sure about that? <laughs> last time, <laughs> last last time, time it did not go, go so well. I had a terrible draft last week. That was awful. Um, um, let's see if we choose I'm the same people. I'm going to start with uh, Drew Brees. Um, okay. I know you had said earlier you, you want Drew Brees to be good. I want Drew Brees to be good. Yeah. He's like that guy that you always want to root for. But, again, they just keep losing too many weapons, losing Cooks. Is, it's not even his fault. At what point does no, he just leave? Right. And he's, he's getting up there in age. So I, I think that's where I'm going to start with is, uh, unfortunately, uh, Drew Brees. Does he leave the Saints? If, because it seems like the organization is not really doing him any right. favors. Where is he going to go? I don't know. Buffalo. I mean, <laughs> Come on over. 
It, we'll have you if you'll have us. So basically every starting like, quarterback, you're going yeah. you to have we'll to take him. Out. Sold. <laughs> Sell his jersey to pay for, to pay for his contract. Um, okay, so you're going to pick Drew Brees. I agree with that. I'm going to go with Ben Roethlisberger as okay. another underwhelming quarterback. Same reason, just old, crickety. <laughs> <laughs> Just get him out of the league. But also, but if you want to play for Buffalo, he seems totally to make cool that, that big pass all the time. Yeah, he does. He does. But I, crickety. the only, I think, <laughs> I mean, he's going to be underwhelming, but they're still going to be successful because of, uh, I almost said Lavar Ball. <laughs> I almost said Lavar Ball. The two Ball. topics are definitely on your mind. Le'Veon Bell. Bell. Those are way too close. <laughs> <laughs> Those are way too close. Le'Veon Bell. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, and Antonio Brown. Anyways, I give up. <laughs> Back says Big Ben. It's hard to say. It's hard to say bad things about when you have Brown to throw to. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> it's almost like he's in the room. I think, uh, um, Jeff says next Madden Pats versus Bills. Oh my God, we have to do it now. We have to do it now. Jeff, you stay really tuned. Want to put yourself Jeff, stay that? tuned for that. Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll go live for a little bit to watch that happen. Um, who will win more games in 2017, the Rams, the Jags, or the Titans? The Rams, the Jags, or the Titans? The Titans. They got the running game. Yeah. They can always fall back on that. LA is still figuring it out. Yeah. And Todd Gurley, if we're talking about underwhelming running backs. Oh, yeah. Took a Todd huge Gurley. step back. Um, okay, so you did Drew Brees. I did Ben Roethlisberger. You got another one for me? Yeah, it's going to have to be uh, Dak. I think Dak uh, Prescott yes, can Dak be Prescott. underwhelming. Okay. I think, um, you know, again, ro- it's phenomenal rookie season, but mm-hmm. second year, we've all seen it before, or teams have all seen him before. Now they can game plan more against him. They know he's more of a threat than just having to worry about the run. Um, and Dallas is always kind of a sideshow, so who knows? Who knows? If, Dallas, especially if Jerry Tony Jones. Romo is still there. Yes. Because you know Jerry. You know Jerry. Uh, I guess we we didn't really address the box of Jordy Flakes you got back there today. I approve. You had the Flutie Flakes. So I, I figured, uh, <laughs> the Jordy Flakes? They had to make yeah, they it. worked their way in. That's they had fine. To make an appearance. I love it. I love it. It's like such a... I don't want you to be the only one. With a, with a box of right. cereal that we shouldn't eat. <laughs> box oh, of I cereal. <laughs> uh, anyways. Okay, so Dak Prescott. Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees. I am going to go. Oh man! See, I want to say like Joe Flacco, but he's already underwhelming. Right. He's already underwhelming, so I'm not going to say Joe Flacco. I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. Okay, that's a good one. Underwhelming. That I mean, he's still fighting for that contract. Yes. It seems like he's going to be fighting for that contract his entire career. his entire career. <laughs> I mean, you know. I don't blame him. You got to fight for it. I but. mean, it, it's it's got to be tough when I mean, he's been there, what, three or four years now? Yes. They just won't make a commitment to him. But they can't find anything better. So they're keeping him for one more year. <laughs> At least one more year. Right. Yep. So I I don't think that's much of a secret right there. It's Kirk Cousins. I mean, he has potential to shine some days, and he has potential to be Kirk Cousins some days. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, yeah, my last one's kind of a cop-out. Okay. But basically the answer is whoever starts for the Browns. <laughs> Doesn't, I mean, whoever We it don't is. know who it is. <laughs> we don't know who it's going to be. I think we'll be it's adding It's going to be underwhelming, line. though. Even, it might be a rookie quarterback coming in that they right. draft. It might, it might be RG3. It might be Ryan Fitzpatrick, for all we know. Uh, but you regardless. You've seen the, uh, the picture of the girl with the jersey with all the names on it. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be adding another name. Another to name to the Browns? Name. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Why not? Or maybe Manziel will come back. Oh, please no. <laughs> Anybody that plays for the Browns. Okay, let's go Let's go do this really quick. Uh, Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, Kirk Cousins. Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, and yeah. anybody playing for the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> the entire city of Cleveland. Yeah. Underwhelming. Uh, okay. Uh, I have one more. Let's see. I got to pick a good one. Uh, here we go. Um, whoever ends up starting for the Bears, 
So it's most likely going to be Mike Lennon. Mike Lennon, yeah. I'm okay with Does that. Does that scare you? I'm happy with no, that. No, it doesn't scare me either. Mike Lennon. People say he, he might make less mistakes than Jay, though. People say, yes. People, it, they say that he didn't really have a chance to get into anything in right, Tampa. In Tampa, yeah. Because Winston well, coming I mean, in. That's, but, that's fair, but he also is he, – he played. He did. So it's not like he didn't play. Right. He had, the, he had a chance. Yes. I mean, he had he a didn't, chance. He didn't take the job. They drafted a quarterback. Not his fault. Nothing you could do about that, right. aside from being a lead quarterback, which he's not. <laughs> <laughs> so there is so, ultimately something. He there is ultimately done something. He <laughs> done. Uh, so yes, to round off our pick six, Mike Lennon. Yes, going to be under. Will not have Alshon Jeffrey. Yes. So you're looking at what Kevin White, Jordan Howard though. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> he's all right. No, he's <laughs> definitely going to underwhelm, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay, so I think that rounds off our choices for today. Uh, let's go through one more time. Kirk Cousins, anybody playing for the Browns, like <laughs> under center, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, else, really. Dak Prescott, Mike Lennon. Am I missing anybody? Drew Brees. Drew Brees, yeah. Underwhelming. We'll see. You heard it here first. Some of them are still. Some of those teams be still chose to win their division. Two of them on my fantasy teams. Yeah, most likely. (laughs) Two of them. (laughs) Mike 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 Lennon, Lennon, Mike Lennon, and and just QB Browns. (laughs) Fill it in there. First overall. Okay, I think that's about it. You got anything else you want to talk about before we get the H out of here? Uh, I don't think so. We covered most most of the stuff. We haven't gotten taken. We haven't gotten taken off the air yet. So. Not yet. Not yet. We still got a couple minutes. We're still okay. Um, yes, I will definitely have to do a Pats vs. Bills Madden 2008 special. I'm sure I already know how that one's going to end up. <laughs> um, here's a spoiler. Spoiler alert. J.P. Lossman's going to throw four more picks. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's kind of the killer is that you have J.P. Lossman. So bad. You're not, I, I, mean, I don't well, even know who our backup years, is in that game. And it's, I mean, it's not going to be good. <laughs> it's one of 40 people. Uh, yes, so the pick six. Thank you all for watching, of course. Um, we have social media and stuff, so be sure to go follow us and like <laughs> us on all that stuff. At Brew Sports Net, hashtag Brew Sports. Uh, we have a website. Uh, are you, do you have a bio on our website yet? I do. You wrote about yourself? Was it the hardest thing in the world? <laughs> it's the hardest thing in the world for me is to write about myself. But, yeah, we have a website, uh, brewsportsnet.com, not to be confused with brewsports.net. It's brewsportsnet.com. Be sure, again, uh, on Twitter, Instagram, anything, at brewsportsnet. So uh, we have a YouTube channel as well, so all of our videos get archived on there. So if you want to watch after the fact, you, of course, you can find us here on Facebook and on YouTube as well. At Bruce Sports Net, fancy that. Uh, James, do you have a uh, do you have some social media stuff? Yeah, you can uh, find me on, on Twitter at, at J Stu Junior. Sweet. Yeah. Are you on Are you on like Snapchat or anything? No, not into They're that. all the same. Snapchat, the same. Instagram, all of them are same. J same Stu for me. That's, that's people. People have like different I handles just, for just everything. Make it it easy. doesn't make sense to me. And My whole life, I'm like banner to to post all. Yeah. yeah. There's no, there's not another banner Turk out there until we're famous. <laughs> like until we've, until we've made it, then I have to be the real <laughs> I with a little check that. mark. Like, man, once I get that check mark, that, it's, like getting, your, it's like getting your doctor, your doctorate, right? uh, your PhD. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. You can find me on all social media at banner Turk. This has been a weird show. <laughs> it's been a weird show. Uh, we talked about Trump. We talked about somehow LeVar Ball got mentioned so again. Why wouldn't it? Unbelievable. Um, yes, of course, uh, if you want us to talk or discuss anything, uh, we uh, get our, 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 what am I trying to say? Our vacation, <laughs> our road trip gets, gets driven by, <laughs> by your discussion and your comments. So <laughs> please always come in and comment. Uh, what he said. If there is anything you want to talk about, post it on our page, and we will talk about it next week. But uh, until next Tuesday morning. Uh, and hopefully next time I am more well rested than I am today. <laughs> but uh, for James Stewart, I'm Tanner Burke, and for Baxter Colburn, who is producing over here because he does everything here. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on the Pick Six. I will see you in an hour. I'm going to go take a quick nap on <laughs> halftime. 
uh, right here at 11 o'clock Central Time.